Platt, and today I drink a large beer from South Korea. That's the Nixle Platt's Beer of the Week. So, uh, the uh, particular beer today, besides being large, is uh, Terra. Uh, real quick, we're going to have to start off by reading this label. Uh, besides the large bottle, it was also the label that kind of caught me. First, it says Terra from AGM. AGM is not the brewery. Uh, apparently, AGM is for Australian Genuine Malt. and something they repeat in several parts of the label. Kind of a big selling point for them. Uh, first off, this is a 1600 milliliter, 1.6 liter bottle of beer. Uh, which is almost a two liter soft drink. This is a plastic bottle like a soft drink bottle, a reusable twist top just like a soft drink bottle. Uh, again, the bottle kind of caught me at first. So it's a, like I said, 1.6 liter bottle. Um, one of the funny things I found also on here says 100% real carbonated beer made from pure AG Australian grain malt. Um, 100% carbonated, or that infers that other beers might only be 50% carbonated or 75% carbonated. I never thought of it like that. More importantly, I never thought of telling people, hey, it's carbonated, you know, as a, as a selling point. But I found that interesting. Um, bottle and brewed by Height General. We'll get into their uh, deal a little bit. But yeah, just interesting label. They really... Uh, on several points, the label talk about the Australian green malt. Now, South Korea, uh, their climate is not conducive, and, and their topography is not conducive to a lot of, you know, malted barley. Makes sense going to South uh, Australia, but I just found that funny that that was a selling point. Real quick, let's talk about a little bit about their background. First, uh, the brewery itself was founded in 1933, at the time known as Chosen Breweries. They opened three breweries up front. Uh, they came out of the gates firing and pretty much the entire history of the brewery they have been the largest you know, or at least one of the largest breweries in South Korea. 1962 they became the first Korean brewery to export uh, their beer out of country. 1993 they released a beer called Hite, H-I-T-E, that ended up becoming their flagship beer. Kind of stereotypical light, lighter color, golden lager. Uh, by 1998, Hyde becomes such a smash that they end up changing the name of the company to Hyde Brewing. Um, movie hit eight years later. In 2006, they, uh, they entered an agreement to buy uh, Jinro. Jinro is the soju maker in South Korea. Uh, those of you may not be familiar, soju is a distilled spirit, usually from rice, can also be from sweet potatoes, and I think they can also use barley. Uh, huge product, the spirit of um, South Korea. Uh, by 2011, the merger had finally completed and the company became known as Hype Jinro Company. Uh, they do something unique over there uh, in beer marketing. Here in the U.S., you know, we watch Monday Night Football and you'll have plenty of beer ads on there. Over there, they're real huge into video games, especially a game called StarCraft. And apparently they have live televised matches of StarCraft and people get together at the bars and whatever. Height uh, sponsored a team called uh, Height uh, in Inthus. I Maybe that's like, you know, uh, AC Milan or uh, Real Madrid or something. Who knows if it means, you know, something similar. But I found that quite interesting. Uh, real quick, let's talk about some of their other products. Um, first is Height the beer. 4.3% ABV. This is a beer, they, and they literally, you know, are kind of open about that it was modeled after Budweiser. Uh, again, a light kind of golden lager that is uh, uses rice as an adjunct. Uh, adjuncts are big over overseas, and we'll talk about that in the next beer. Uh, the next beer, great name for a beer, Prime Max, 4.5% ABV. It apparently is one of only two beers in South Korea made with 100% malted barley. Again, we like to think that only like Anheuser-Busch or Heineken or Molson Coors Water, they're, they're, they're the only ones that uh, use adjuncts. No, adjuncts are used all over the world, and again, especially for these kind of lighter colored uh, golden lagers. Uh, next is General Mockley. We get in the General pot, you know, uh, products. We've had we tried Mockley not too long ago. Uh, 
Depending on the jurisdiction where it can be considered a rice wine or a rice beer, this particular product is 6%, so again, you're kind of in the in-between zone. And lastly is Genro Soju. According to their website, they claim they are the highest selling spirit brand in the world. Um, but they have a little asterisk, and there's a caveat to it, and it notes their source. Part of the deal with Soju is it is a distilled spirit. But it's generally sold anywhere from like 30 to 50 proof, which is about half your regular, you know, bottle of vodka, which is 80 proof. Also, too, they sell them in smaller size bottles, like 275 milliliters, 300 milliliters, something like that, which is about half the size of a regular 750 milliliters. So probably as far as total bottles sold, that probably is true. But as far as gallons sold... It's still, I think right now, it's a whiskey, a blended whiskey made in India that's the number one. Uh, Smirnoff for years was the number one selling product, or, you know, Spirit. I think Bacardi had a run at it one time. But anyway, interesting stuff right there. They also produce a line of flavored sojus, mineral waters, energy drinks. They are a full uh, beverage company. Well, enough about that. Before we try this big beer, let's check out the stats. So before we get going on the spear, I want to talk about the term malt because, again, they throw it around here. It gets thrown around a lot, uh, you know, malt liquor, what have you. But then we also see it outside the alcoholic beverage world. We see it in things like malted milk, malt vinegar. So what is malt? I mean, are they talking about the same thing? Basically, malt is, is created from germinated cereal grains. So it could be wheat, it could be barley, it could be rye, it could be corn even, even though you don't see a ton of that. Uh, pretty much any cereal grain, anything with a little seed, what they do is they soak those seeds in water, it kicks off the germination process. Inside those seeds, there's a ton of starches for when that plant starts to grow. When the germination starts, the enzymes kick in, turn those starches into sugar, and that's the sugar we use to bake beer. Now, if you've seen any of my home brewing videos, We'll crush those grains, cook them, extract that sugar, and that's what the yeast eat. And that's where we get, again, beer, which the, if you distill beer, that becomes whiskey. So that's the base of that. But because it's a sugary, because we're basically converting starch to sugar and now have access to that sugar, you can use it for a lot of other things. Um, you can they make what's called malt extract. You've probably seen it in some of my home brewing kit videos. And again, it, it's basically a sugar. Uh, the type of sugar is called maltose, even though there's other sugars in the process. The main one's called maltose. But it's, a, it's as much a sugar as the table sugar you have at your house. It's a little different flavor profile, what have you, but they use that in other products. Again, uh, malt vinegar is a good example. Uh, part of the vinegar making process is fermentation. Well, why not give them something that, you know, ferments beer? Malt. Uh, Again, malted milk, you, you, they would add a little bit of the, the powder to sweeten up the milk. I think it was like also with uh, powdered milk or what have you. But making candies like Whoppers, if you've seen those in the movies, Whoppers, that's made from malt. Ovaltine, if you remember the movie uh, Christmas Story, Ovaltine is a malted product. And back in the days, if you've ever been to a place and you've heard the term shakes and then malts and wonder what the difference they would add malt powder, some, probably something like an Ovaltine, into the ice cream and kind of give it a blend, and you had a malt. But that's what malt is, and it, it applies to all those terms, but it comes from the same thing, germinated uh, cereal grains. So basically a sugar derived from them that gets used anywhere. Malt, liquid malt extract, you could almost use like you would a molasses, what have you. So anyway, just want to kind of uh, go over that term. Enough about that. We got a lot of beer to drink here. All right. Give it a pour. All right. Nice little head. Plenty of bubbles. Oh, it's good. You know, it's really carbonated, so that's nice to know. Uh, kind of a darker golden color than, let's say, your Bud Miller and Coors. Uh, let's go in for the nose. Pretty simple nose. You get a slight bit of that skunk. It's not real apparent, but again, the classic green bottle, lager skunk, you get a little bit on the nose. 
Um, head didn't last long, but nice lacing on the glass. Let's give her a try. Hmm. Not bad. Goes down easy. Uh, it has a little more body than your kind of generic uh, lager. Um, well, let me go back in there again. Yeah, just a slight bit of skunk. I get a little bit of the corn. There's some adjunct in there. Um, that being said, this is, you know, uh, 4.6% ABV, golden color. Um, goes down fairly easy. Nothing, nothing incredible about it, but it, it kind of falls in the categories of beers. I'm not going out to buy it, but if you bought me one, I'll drink it. Uh, <laughs> this way again kind of sticks out with the bottle oh to let you know i found this for 3.99 so almost two liters of beer for 3.99 that's kind of tough to beat there give her one more sip well i hope you like this video if you did please subscribe down below also please like the video because it lets youtube know we're putting out good content if you have any questions comments concerns or beers that you'd like me to try please leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the twitter page Till next time, bottoms up.